Billy Kidd is not your average magician. Her quirky, mischievous, comedic style, ingenious magic effects, and stellar skill set are just the tip of the iceberg. She's a one-stop magic shop with exceptional, proven, close-up magic skills, escape skills, stage skills, street magic skills, audience participation skills, TV magic skills, social media magic skills, comedy magic skills, aerial magic skills. Plus, she co-hosts Happy Talk, a weekly series that looks on the brighter side of life with Paul DeBeck. Her magic screen credits include Wizard Wars, Masters of Illusion, Breaking Magic, the magic of science for the Discovery Channel, now you see it, the next great magician, and more. I believe she's had more magic success and more magic exposure than any other female magician in my lifetime. And she's in her prime. Belly is multifaceted, multi-talented, and definitely thinks out of the box. I'm truly thrilled she's here today to chat with us on Magical Women. Please welcome the unstoppable, undeniably talented, Billy Kidd. Hello, Billy Kidd here. Thanks for having me, Connie. Yay. So happy to see your smiling, beautiful face. Oh, thank you. You too. You know, for the viewers at home, can you just tell them a little bit about yourself and, and how you became involved in magic? Yeah, so I got into magic quite late than I think most magicians. The first magician I ever saw, I was in my mid-twenties, and I'd never seen magic before, never been exposed to it, really had no interest whatsoever. And then I saw this street magician performing. His name was Nick Nicholas, and literally it was in that moment I, uh, I was hooked, and that was it. End of story. <laughs> And, and, but how were you hooked? Were you hooked for the wonder? Were you hooked because were you the type of audience member that said, hey, I want to figure that out? Um, did you suspend disbelief? I, I would say all of the above. At first, I, I had no idea how the, the trick worked. We was doing the cups and balls amongst other things. And uh, I was blown away by the magic. I didn't know how it was done. So th that was one hook. And then on the other hand, he was the street performer, which I had never even um, gave any respect to any street performer up until that point. And I thought it was amazing how out of nothing, he was able to gather an audience, make them stay there, and then they paid him at the end. And I thought that was also amazing. So I kind of got hooked into street performance and magic at the same time. And, and because he was my first magician I saw, that's kind of my introduction into magic. Um, and then it kind of grew from there. He told me what, what books to, to study from, and I just did everything he told me to, and went on my own little journey. Nice. What did you start with? Royal Road to Card Magic was the book he told me to get. And funny enough, the day after he told me that, I went into a secondhand bookshop and that book was sat right there on a the counter. And Destiny. I was like, that, I'm like, that must be the book, Royal Road. It sounds familiar. It was hard for me to remember the name of that book for some reason, but I saw it there and I, and I bought it. It was like it's paperback. And then I just learned everything in it for, gosh, for, for about a year, I think I studied, I studied that book. And, uh, and just kind of went, dived in deep, deep into the magical arts, starting with that book. Yeah, so that's a very important book to me. Fabulous. Um, did you have any other magicians that were sort of an inspiration or that, you know, that mentored you perhaps? No, no, not at all. Basically, I, I was fortunate enough that Nick Nicholas, he was performing at this, this festival and then he stayed for another festival. So I pretty much got to watch him for about, about two months and I just gave him all my money. Every time I watched a show, I would give him like, you know, a 10 or a 20 every yeah. single time, uh, just because I just, I just fell in love with it so much. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I would say he's pretty much the first mentor, I wanna say, as far as like what books to read and what, what moves to learn. And then I just kind of did what I thought I was supposed to by watching him. So when he left, I ended up just uh, trying to do street performing myself. So I just found, you know, anywhere I could do it, I would, I'd be performing magic. So, so you started with cards and then did you segue to cups and balls or was it natural progression or did you end up in a magic shop and just, or how, how did you, what, how did you find your material? 
Um, mostly, well, because of Road to Card Magic, I mostly studied cards. And because he did the cups and balls, I really wanted to learn the cups and balls as well, because I saw just like the impact that it had on an audience. Uh, so I would say everything kind of progressed kind of naturally. So cards are always my first love, and it's probably what I study the most out of, it, out of anything. Right. Uh, and then, of course, I learned the cups and balls, and I kind of incorporated probably mostly card tricks and cups and balls into a street show. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you know, I was also studying the history of magic and learning all the, all different types of magic. And then I guess at some point as a magician, you kind of find your niche. You kind of go, oh, I think I like cards more than coins. Or I think I like coins more than cards. And that kind of just happens naturally, I believe. So, yeah, I studied mostly cards, but I also studied lots of history of magic, like Slidini, learning a lot of his coin routines and just how he moved. He was like a master of being very natural in his body movement. And that was a big lesson as well. So I kind of studied a bit of everything. But uh, card magic is probably my, my first love and still is to this day. Now, you studied acting. How does the acting incorporate into your work? Like, um, does it help you? Do you tell stories when you're putting a, a routine together? Is that, what's your process and how does that acting help that process? I, uh, that's a good, good question. Um, what you learn as an actor is, uh, man, I just try to keep it short. <laughs> but you learn, you, learn, you learn all about your idiosyncrasies. You learn all about uh, yourself. Um, you 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 become very body aware, which are, these are all things are tools that I say are just as important when you're a magician. Now I didn't know or realize in the beginning the direct correlation between being an actor and a magician, so I don't really think about it as much. I think all the training I've done um, since I was a kid up until you know I'm still always in training. Um, it it feels my magic. It, it is incorporated, but not really consciously because it's it's almost a separate thing to me. Um, having said that, I would say a lot of people would describe my shows as very storytelling like a lot of people call it more theater than anything, but it's never, it's not really my intention. So yeah. what my process is, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the classics. I'll study, you know, a, a bunch of different types of tricks and whatever hits me off a page, I will always put it aside or mark, bookmark it. And then I would research everything I can about whatever that, that, that routine is. I'll watch as many performances and read as much history on that particular trick and anything that I find similar or things that I've always questioned when other performers do whatever trick I will make those rules and be like I'm not allowed to do any of that so I start from scratch I know what the effect is but I have no presentation so then I rewrite everything from from beginning to end so it's 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 a long journey doing that but that's pretty much how I do every piece of magic um it's done that that way yeah it makes it yours and so you've taken yes. something perhaps that uh, multiple performers have performed, but you've made it, you've, you've put your signature onto it and made it your style. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little example. Um, one of the, my very first magic performances ever, I was, uh, was kind of training just for fun on, uh, on aerial equipment, like in the circus. Some yeah. friends of mine had a circus school that they were just starting and they needed students. And I was like, I'll be your student. Uh, so I was learning like trapeze and aerial silks and rope just for fun not to do it professionally and they put on a little show and they're like why don't you incorporate some of this magic that you're learning and i was like sure why not and i know nothing about aerial arts or magic really at this time but i was learning the the mercury fold and card for mouth which you see a lot of especially a lot of street magicians do so an example of of how do you make a simple like card for mouth routine different well i in my research is like well they always just put it in their mouth and slide a tongue and whatever those yeah. are the lines that most people use but I was like well what if my hands couldn't hold the cards what if I can't physically can't hold them well therefore the trapeze makes sense because I need to hold on to a trapeze for my life right. therefore where do the cards go they can't go in a pocket because you're upside down and they'd fall out mm-hmm. so they have to go in your mouth and then so just a little change like that and that trapeze routine has haunted me since the beginning of my career uh, to this day. It's one of my most requested routines to do, even though I don't do it very often at all. Yeah, It's fascinating because um, I, I did single trapeze and I was an aerialist before I, I became a magician. Ah. And I've always been fascinated, um, other than upside down straight jacket escape spinning, th- those, that's a, a common uh, occurrence. But I've always... Um, wanted to come up with a, a magic routine that was in the air and and how you've put this together and your thought process of, uh, uh, from beginning to middle to end it's brilliant i i would i never thought of it and and i admire that so much that you had that oh thank you 
and you took it well, to another level that nobody thought of it. It's, it's, and I was an aerialist, you know, it's very good. <laughs> Well, thank you. I mean, and it's, it's weird for me to look back at that because that is probably, I would say, one of the first routines I ever came up with magically yeah. uh, and really not knowing anything about magic or aerial. So I kind of was had more, I guess, more guts. I had more courage to do whatever because I, I, I knew less about the art form. Uh, and but in a way, I think that's kind of just that's where I started. And, I, and mm -hmm. every routine I've kind of treated the same. So, yeah, yeah maybe I just got lucky in the way I think. No, no, it's your creative process. It's unique to you and it, it makes your work um, completely different and you approach it from a, a different perspective than most people. And I think that's refreshing and, and, and that gives your work a different, a different element that, that, um, that others don't have. Oh, I also think because I got into magic quite late, not being influenced by other magicians has actually helped yeah. because when I got into magic, I was so used to watching professional performers in, in other art forms, but I've never seen magicians before. And then when I started, I made a decision, I only want to watch magic. I don't want to watch any other kind of theater anymore. I've done that. I've seen millions of shows. I just want to study magic. So to this day, I have, I've barely seen any other performance art except for magic. And I've made that kind of a rule. Yeah. But I remember early on in deciding that, my initial feeling, being still really an outsider, was I always felt like watching magicians, it felt like I was watching really amateur actors that are just good with their hands. Yeah. That was the feeling I got from it. I was like, oh, why don't, I don't know, there's a disconnect between these magicians and what they're doing. And I, and I couldn't figure that out for a while. So yeah, not being influenced by magicians, I think has been one of my advantages. Yeah, as much as I wish I got into magic, well, as a kid, so I could have had done all that study time and practice time, right. you know, at the same time, I'm, I'm also equally grateful that I didn't get into it that young. So it's, it's a battle I have amongst myself. <laughs> Your biggest fear, what would be the thing that you're the most terrified of and that you've had to overcome? Ooh, biggest fear. I think from, well, probably every magician's fear is something's going to go wrong on stage drastically and there's no way out of it. Uh, and I've been there. I've been there. Yeah, I've had things go completely wrong. And certain tricks where you just go, there's no out, that's it. It has to work or, or it kind of doesn't. Yeah. Uh, but I, at the same time, I love those moments because I love to figure out what, what did I do? When I look back, I'll go, what did I do to get out of that situation? Or did I even get out of the situation? So as horrible as they are in the moment, they are some of my best moments. Yeah, yeah they're, they're your learning curve. And, and, and yeah, you learn so much. Yeah, sometimes, um, actually you learn something that you keep you stay that stays in your show because uh it, it actually was funny or it, it, but at the time your heart's racing and, and you feel naked i call them magic gremlins yeah oh, and magic they pop gremlins. up at the That's worst crazy. time <laughs> yeah yeah and, or then you learn every time you do that routine or whatever the yeah. effect is you know you're if you double check your stuff before you go on stage you really you're extra checking everything just because you've had an experience beforehand so yeah. so yeah i i think that's the biggest fear really is that <laughs> thanks thanks so much take care have a good day or night cool. now. You, uh, good evening I, it, you know it doesn't matter anymore i go to bed at all awkward hours so yep. it's all good okay but you cool. anything, stay in touch okay all right you too thank you okay connie have you a good too. day bye bye-bye Remember to subscribe and comment below.